Good morning, Seawolves. My name is Lane Groom. And I'm Salva Montalo. Humanitarian aid trucks carrying desperately needed aid will enter Gaza from Egypt's border in the coming days, according to the White House. Egypt is, re is repairing roads at the Rafah border, which has been out of function since the first day of bombardment in Gaza. Rafah is the only crossing point to Gaza Strip that is not controlled by Israel. President Joe Biden said Israel had agreed to allow the opening of the Egypt-Gaza Rafah crossing on a condition that the humanitarian assistance was not diverted by Hamas for its own use. The United States unequivocally stands for the protection of civilian life during conflict, and I grieve, I truly grieve for the families who were killed or wounded by this tragedy. The people of Gaza need food, water, medicine, shelter. Today I asked the Israeli cabinet who I met with for some time this morning to agree to the delivery of life-saving humanitarian assistance to civilians in Gaza. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who is now in Israel meeting with his Israeli counterpart, pledged to stand with Israel and emphasize Israel's right to self-defense. Prime Minister, you describe this as Israel's darkest hour. Well, then it's for me to say I'm proud to stand here with you in Israel's darkest hour as your friend who will stand with you in solidarity, who will stand with your people. A day after a deadly explosion at the Al-Hali Baptist Hospital in Gaza that killed and wounded hundreds of people, the United States has released its own assessment of what caused the devastation. Israel and Biden say that based on the highly confident intelligence evidence, the cause of the blast is a misfire by the Gaza militants, suggesting that Israel is not responsible for the attack. But Palestinian officials and several Arab leaders accuse Israel of hitting the hospital through the ongoing airstrikes in Gaza. Islamic Jihad, a rival group to Hamas, has denied any responsibility for the hospital attack. Thousands of people took to the streets in cities across the world as anger spread over the conflict and hospital blasts. 300 protesters have been arrested after demanding a ceasefire to the Israel-Hamas war in a protest that took place on Capitol Hill on Wednesday. People from all across the country attended the rally to speak out against the Israeli government, and one protester, Jim Best, who visited Gaza in 2016, says he felt obligated to join the protest after seeing the situation with his own eyes. His heart and mind and soul will never be the same. The protest was organized by two progressive Jewish groups, Jewish Voice for Peace and If Not Now, and took place inside the congressional building where protest is not allowed. The groups are known for their support of Palestinian liberation and far left views. Here on Stony Brook University's campus, students protested against the current conflict in Gaza. The protesters were mostly pro-Palestinian, as they were holding signs in support of Palestinian people and condemning the actions of Israel. On this campus, I do feel safe, thankfully, and I think that we are in a good environment here, at least. It is covered, but things could be altered. A good example is recently what happened is the Hamas, the terrorist organization, did shoot a missile and it misfired and actually hit a hospital in Gaza. But what they did with that is they actually turned it around and blamed Israel, saying that they shot it. But it's, it's always been known that like Israel doesn't aim for hospitals. Muslim students did an amazing job in their, in their vigil. They, they expressed their feelings, they did prayers. So it, uh, I think this particular protest went, went by very peacefully and, and it went well. Stony Brook University President Maury McInnes released a statement two days after the initial terrorist attack by Hamas on Israeli civilians, which killed more than 1,200 people. President McInnes said, like most of you, as I've watched news reports from Israel and Gaza the past several days, I've been distressed by the increasing violence, loss of life, and suffering. In particular, I have been disturbed by the indiscriminate attacks on civilians and the taking of hostages, including children and the elderly. Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan's path to becoming House Speaker is now in doubt after he fell short in voting again. Jordan will not seek another vote today, which will give temporary House Speaker Patrick McHenry additional powers. Improvement I can get from the most conservative members of the conference to the more modern members of the conference. So, got a uh, whole cross section of the conference. It's important that we get the last uh, last few. Jim Jordan's second loss showed weaker support, with 22 of his fellow Re Republican House members voting for other candidates, compared to 20 in the first vote. This all comes after Louisiana Representative Steve Scalise abruptly pulled out of the House Speaker race one day after his nomination, 
which has left Congress speakerless for more than two weeks. Several rescued beagles were the special guests on Capitol Hill to lobby the Better Care for Animals Act. The dog's mission was to wag tails, spread love, and champion a bill that will ensure a brighter because future for all creatures, big and small. The canines joined Republican Senator John Kennedy, Democrat Senator Richard Blumenthal, and animal welfare advocates on Wednesday. The bipartisan bill will aim to better protect all animals covered under the Animal Welfare Act, including animals at research facilities, exhibitions at zoos and aquariums, and commercial pet breeding operations, like the one these dogs were from. These beagles were amongst the 4,000 animals rescued from a mass breeding facility in Virginia where they endured horrific living conditions. That's all we have for today. I'm Lane Groom. And I'm Salva Montella. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Stony Brook News Break.